Hello and a warm welcome to today's reflection for April the 1st. If I asked you what special day it was today, I wonder what you would answer. I'm guessing because you are watching this Facebook page, you would say Maundy Thursday and not April Fool's Day, like lots of people who will be celebrating this until midday. That's not to say you can't join in a bit of uh, harmless fun. I remember as a child growing up with four brothers. Um, it was a lot of fun, but not always harmless, unfortunately. Maundy Thursday was not a fun day for Jesus, but a very important one. Maundy Thursday is the day that begins the three most important days of the Christian calendar. Today, we recollect the last night of his life and the approaching end of his earthly ministry. I will read John 13, 1 to 17, 31b to 35. Now before the festival of the Passover, Jesus knew that his hour had come to depart from this world and go to the Father. Having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. The devil had already put into the heart of Judas, son of Simon Iscariot, to betray him. And during supper, Jesus, knowing that the Father had given all things into his hands and that he had come from God and was going to God, got up from the table, took off his outer robe and tied a towel around himself. Then he poured water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet and to wipe them with the towel that was tied around him. He came to Simon Peter, who said to him, Lord, are you going to wash my feet? Jesus answered, You do not know what I am doing, but later you will understand. Peter said to him, You will never wash my feet. And Jesus answered, Unless I wash you, you have no share with me. Simon Peter said to him, Lord, not only my feet, but also my hands and my head. And Jesus said to him, One who has bathed does not need to wash except for the feet, but is entirely clean. And you are clean, though not all of you, for he knew who was to betray him. And for this reason, he said, not all of you are clean. After he had washed their feet, he had put on his robe and had returned to the table, he said to them, Do you know what I have done to you? You call me teacher and Lord, and you are right, for that is what I am. So if I, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you also ought to wash one another's feet. For I have set you an example that you also should do as I have done to you. Very truly I tell you, servants are not greater than their master, nor are messengers greater than the one who sent them. If you know these things, you are blessed if you do them. Now the Son of Man has been glorified, and God has been glorified in him. If God has been glorified in him, God will also glorify him in himself and will glorify him at once. Little children, I am with you only a little longer. You will look for me, and as I said to the Jews, so now I say to you, where I am going, you cannot come. I give you a new commandment, that you love one another, just as I have loved you. You also should love one another. And by this, everyone will know that you are my disciples if you have love for one another. This is the Gospel of Christ. Thanks be to God. So, Maundy Thursday. Maundy Thursday. The word Maundy comes from the Latin term mandatum, meaning to command. So today... We commem commemorate Jesus' mandate to the disciples after he washed their feet during the Passover meal. In John's Gospel, 
He doesn't mention the Last Supper or the Passover meal in detail, as in Matthew, Mark and Luke. But as many Christians around the world may not be able to share in communion today, although thanks be to God some of our churches are open, not everyone is able to attend due to the pandemic. Communion is the heart of our faith. Through it, we receive nourishment for the journey. Through it, we become close to God. But we have our memories. The many times we have received communion during our lives, either in joyful times or in the depths of distress. The nourishment is still there deep within us. So today, let's all look back on those times and pray they still will feed us if we aren't able to go in person. But John's focus is on foot washing. And this account is not in any of the other gospels. In this intimate act of washing feet, we see and hear Jesus' teaching, touching, calling, sharing, loving, just as he had been in the last three years from the start of his earthly ministry. So as we explore the foot washing a little further, it seems that their feet would have been washed when they entered the room before the Passover supper by a servant, as was the custom. So it was not about practical need for the act of physical cleansing. Of course, there is more to this, as John puts it, having loved his own who were in the world. He now showed them the full extent of his love. He showed them by his humility. Taking the lowest role showed them by accepting them all without exception, but within, with human faults and failings. One who would betray, one who would deny, one who would doubt, and many who would flee. He accepted all his disciples and those who through the years have been their successors. The waters of Jordan marked a new beginning for Jesus and the waters in that bowl at the Passover meal marked a new beginning for his followers. Not washing away grime of daily life, but in and through Christ washing away of our guilt and sinfulness. So we are united with him in love and purpose, compassion and service. The second instruction to his disciples was to love one another as I have loved you. Not that such love was an end in itself, but so that others will know whose they are and whom they serve, Jesus Christ. That love, or the 21st century equivalent, particularly in the past year, is caring for the sick and the lonely, being a listening ear to the anxious and confused, following the rules to help the NHS and save lives as many other opportunities to give help when needed. It means looking at the world with Jesus' eyes, where it is torn and broken, injustice, hardships, Though Jesus' actions and instructions were for a few people gathered in a private room, they were given as an example or a pattern to follow, as to show the world the extent of Jesus' love. From one small room in Jerusalem, the story has reached the four corners of this wide earth. In the simple dignity of a small church, in the city church set amidst of teeming crowds, in the enduring dignity of ancient cathedrals, in the intimacy of someone's home, or on a Zoom meeting. Jesus Christ is remembered as people celebrate his self-giving love shown upon a cross. And we have the luxury of knowing what happened in three days. The disciples didn't. Jesus was preparing them for their future in his service. Are we prepared? Are we ready for following him? If we could sing now, I think we would sing the song. A new commandment I give unto you, that you love one another as I have loved you. 
that you love one another as I have loved you. By this shall all men know you are my disciples, if you have love for one another. I end the serve of this uh, reflection today with the collect for Maundy, Thur Maundy Thursday. Almighty Father, whose dear Son, on the night before he suffered, instituted the sacrament of his body and blood, mercifully grant that we may receive it thankfully in remembrance of Jesus Christ our Lord, who in these holy mysteries gives us a pledge of eternal life and who now lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God for ever and ever. Amen. Thank you for listening and I hope you're able to join us tomorrow for the Good Friday. <laughs>